Hi sixth graders, welcome to your theme lesson video. And it's kind of nice for you because this theme lesson should be quite a bit of review for you because we did theme way back when at the beginning of the school year in trimester one. So hopefully this is a refresher for you. If not, make sure that you're paying extra close attention and maybe even taking notes. So theme. And remember that we are officially done with lemons, and so we are going to basically be talking about the theme of lemons and the theme as a whole, not chapter by chapter, but like the whole theme of lemons. But first, we kind of need to know what theme is. So what is theme? Theme is going to be the moral, the message, or the lesson of the story. So a lot of times we just shorten this definition to the moral of the story, meaning what is the point? What is the main kind of like purpose of this story? And again, it's always going to be like a moral message or a lesson of the story. So examples of some common themes is going to be like hard work pays off. It's okay to be different. Friendship comes in different forms. It's okay to fear, face your fears. So you'll notice that these are like phrases that we sometimes even use in our day-to-day -day lives. And that's okay. A lot of times the themes that you pick up on are going to be themes that are like phrases that you've said before. Now, one theme that fits pretty well with this is when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That is totally a theme or like the moral lesson of a story. However, for the project that you guys are going to be doing this week, you are not allowed to use that one. So if you do use that one, this is your first warning that you will lose points. So don't do it. Don't do it. Be more creative. But like things like that, phrases like that, quotes are going to be super good uses of theme. And that's going to be a lot of where your inspiration on determining a theme comes from. So why do we use theme? Because it helps us connect to a story, meaning the plot, the characters, the conflict, the setting, the, the events in the story. It helps us as readers connect to the story. Um, it gives it a little bit more of like a relatable aspect as well. And like I said earlier, it also gives purpose and a point to the story. Um, a lot of the times when we talk about conflict, we talk about how without conflict, what where would the entertainment factor be in a story? That's kind of the same with theme. Like there's always a theme. There's always a life lesson or a moral of a story that's embedded in a story or in a movie even, even in a song. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little practice. And with this practice, we're going to read the short story called The Lumberjack's Beard. Um, shout out to Mrs. Nancy's kids for letting us borrow this. But as you follow along with this, make sure that you are kind of starting to brainstorm possible themes. And it's not very long, but um, I want you to see if you can kind of start thinking of some themes that would go along with this story. So again, it's called The Lumberjack's Beard. Big Jim Hickory was a lumberjack. He lived by the forest in a little log cabin. He had burly shoulders and a big, bristly beard. Every morning, he did limbering up exercises. It's very important to limber up if you're a lumberjack. After a hearty breakfast of pancakes and maple syrup, Jim slung his trusty axe over his burly shoulder and headed out into the forest. Chop, choppity chop, went Jim's axe. Timber! echoing through the valley as he, as he felled tree after tree after tree. After a long day of swinging, whacking, cleaving, and hacking, Jim headed back to his cabin. That evening, when he was just about to go to bed, he heard a peck, peckety, peck at the door. Jim looked down to see a small and very angry bird. I had just built a new nest in my tree, shrieked the bird, and you chopped it down. Jim scratched his chin, and then he had an idea. I suppose you could move into my beard, he said. Very well then, said the bird, and it flew in. The next morning, Jim woke up earlier than usual due to the birds chirping at the crack of dawn. He did his limbering up exercises, got dressed, and ate his breakfast, with a little help from his new tenant in his beard. Jim's next job was to strip all the branches and leaves from the tree trunks and burn them in a big bonfire. After a long day of chopping, snapping, burning, and crackling, Jim trudged back to his cabin for a well-earned rest. No sooner had he put away his axe that he heard a noise at the door. Scratch, scratch, de scratch. He looked down to see a very angry porcupine. I needed those leaves and pine needles to make a cozy shelter, but you burned them. Where am I going to live now? Snapped the porcupine. Jim thought about it and scratched his chin. Well, he said, I suppose he could move into my beard. He bent down and the porcupine crawled in. 
the next morning. Jim woke even earlier and attempted to do his limbering up exercises. He looked in the mirror and scratched his chin. Yow! He got a porcupine quill in his fingers. He tried to eat his breakfast, but he lost his appetite when he noticed that bird poop was on his shirt. Jim's job that day was to float all the tree trunks down the river to the lumber yard. One by one, he rolled the logs into the fast-flowing water. After a hard day of lugging, splashing, rolling, and crushing, crashing, Jim staggered back to the cabin. Thump, thumpity, thump went his door. He looked down to see a very angry beaver on his door. I spent all day building my dam, and it got smashed to bits by those logs you threw in the river, it snarled. Without a word, Jim picked up the beaver and put it in his beard. Between the birds chirping, the porcupines prickling, and the beavers thumping, Jim didn't get much sleep that night. He was too tired to do his limbering up exercises in the morning, and the beaver's thumping tail knocked his pancakes all over the floor. That's it, cried Jim. I can't take it anymore. You all have to move out today. But where will we live, cried the animals. As Jim scratched his chin, he had a brilliant idea. He went into his bathroom, took out a razor, and began to shave off his big, bristly beard. Then he took the hair and piled it up on his porch, and the bird, the porcupine, and the beaver all moved into their big, bristly new den. That night, Jim slept better than he had for some time. He woke up and did some particularly vigorous limbering up exercises and put on a fresh plaid shirt. Then he made an enormous tower of pancakes and maple syrup. Jim looked out the window at the bare ground where the forest used to be and scratched his now stubbly chin. Then he had another brilliant idea. Jim took his shovel and dug hole after hole after hole and planted tree after tree after tree. Jim's beard grew back over time. The trees took quite a bit longer, but it was worth the wait. The end. Ah. So now what I want you to do is think of some possible themes from the story. And I'm going to give you a couple to go off of, but I also want you to start kind of thinking about what is the moral of this story or what is the lesson that is learned here? And theme is kind of fun because there's a lot of different ways that you can play with the words and play with the point or the purpose or the moral of the story. So it's okay if what you're thinking doesn't exactly match what you're going to see on this slide, but just keep in mind that you're always thinking about the moral of the story or like the point of the story, the life lesson. So some themes that you could potentially use for this story would be always help those in need, friendship comes in all shapes and sizes, and kindness is key. Now, again, are those the only themes that you could use? No, absolutely not. There's so many more that you could potentially use for this and make work. So again, if you have any different themes that you're thinking of, please feel free to put it in the Google form because that's where you're off to next. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are probably going to be some questions specifically about this video lesson that you might want to check out. So be very... um. Be very cognizant, very aware of that because this Google form, again, is just for us to make sure that you are watching the video and setting yourself up for success. So good luck. Let me know if you have any questions on that Google form.